think I thought it changed some of the uh, uh, the way the game was going. But Skip, I, I still believe the Bucks was winning this game. I believe the Bucks were the better team last night, and they play if they play another ten times with the same lineup. The Bucs are going to beat them another 10 times. They just can't protect Patrick Mahomes. Skip, I mean, you, you got eight penalties for, what, 95 yards in the first half, and the penalties led to a bunch of touchdowns. You get uh, uh, Chris Jones hitting the guy in the face right there in front of the official, 15 yards. Now, that did lead to a goal line stand, mm -hmm. but you get lined up for a field goal. You got three. McCole Harmon lines up off sides. They take the three off the board. They get a touchdown. It was a ticky-tack. You get a long P.I. right before the half, spot foul, and then Honey Badger gets a P.I. call into the, in the end zone, put the ball at the one-yard line. That's a touchdown. Great whip route by Antonio Brown. Brady does a great job of throwing the ball, keeping it low so it doesn't get popped up or intercepted. Yep. Uh, the the, uh, the Karen gets batted up into the air. Mm -hmm. uh, and really, of all the calls, I didn't think the the... The Mike Evans called the end zone skip. I don't think he could have called that. The ball hit the back, <laughs> hit the back, back wall. So unless he stretched off strong, I don't think he's catching that. I thought the one on Ward with a little ticky tack, the one Honey Badger ended up picking off. But skip, they were doing it. It just for me, considering how they let them play in the NFC Championship game, yep. and then the way they called it was totally different. I don't know if they call a game like this in the regular season. They called this really close, and normally in a game like this. I remember playing in the Super Bowl my first two times with Mike. Mike's like, they're going to let you play. Mm -hmm. So don't expect to get the calls that we would normally get. Don't expect that. Brian Billick, when I was in Baltimore, said the exact same thing. They're going to let you play. Yep. I don't think they let them play mm -hmm. uh, as much as that I would have liked to have seen. Yep. But Kansas City was committing the fouls that were called against them. You can't line up off sides. Mm. It's as simple as that. The mistakes that you make, you just can't make those mistakes in a game of this magnitude. Mm -hmm playing a team as hot as that with a quarterback like that. So, for me, Skip, it was not luck that these call, these uh, penalties were called. Luck goes to the prepared. What's mm -hmm. happened when preparation meets opportunity. Yep. Tampa, I want to say this again for so everybody out there can understand, Tampa was the better team last night. Mm. That's why they won. Okay, that is very big of you to acknowledge that publicly. I appreciate that. The point of this discussion is <laughs> that there was no late game, game changing no, call. No. There was no Saints Ram uncalled penalty right. that vaulted the Rams into that right. Super Bowl a couple right. years back. Or years the Green back. Bay call on yep. third down and short in the okay. game, Tampa the first down. Okay. None of that happened. All the calls happened in the first half, but late in the first half. And I'm going to try to be incredibly objective about this because the, the Brady haters have some points here mm -hmm. if we go through them. But the first one was the tipped interception that came on a third and four play at the Kansas City 32. This was with 7.55 to go in the second quarter and tipped and Honey Badger gets it. And, and he was crushed because he wanted to pick off Tom Brady, obviously, right. and it got nullified. Okay, so there's uh, I don't know if I'd Charvarius it. Ward um, there's the tipped interception. Okay, they were clutching and grabbing all night long. Right. And I, th I thought they did let them get away with some of that. Mm -hmm. That one was pretty blatant to me. And Mike Evans is such a load because he's 6'5", right. 2 whatever he is, 235. Mm -hmm. And th they do, it's, it's the Shaquille O'Neal sort of syndrome. of they, they let him beat on him a lot. Right. But that one, he was grabbing, holding, pulling on him. And whoever, the, the ref on that side said, I, I can't let you go that far. And so that negates that, that intercept. I, I didn't have a problem with that penalty. Okay, now we get to the offsides. They call it on Nicole Hardman, but it looks to me like Antonio Hamilton is also offsides on this. There's the tipped interception. Here's the field goal play. I, I think it was a double offsides, but they the, the official... Play-by-play -play says it was McCole Hardman coming from the top of the screen, but it, it looked like that Hamilton lined up offsides to me, so I, I don't have a huge problem with that. He lined up offsides. It just looked like he lined up. Skip, do, if, do they sometimes let that go? Sometimes, skip, but it's, the, it's, it's the, the Super Bowl. It's the D forward play. Okay. Remember in the NFC nah, Championship game, he lined up offsides okay. and, and in the gate of the INT. Okay, and so that leads to the 17-yarder to Gronk. Okay, yes. that for the 14. Uh, to what was it, 14 to three touchdown. Right, correct. Okay. Then we get to the sequence at the end of the half. Okay. To your point, it's first and 10 
at the Tampa Bay 42 after the two timeouts, and you say, well, you know what's coming. They're, they're going to try to get one, yes! get one deep. Okay, so could this have gone uncalled? Bouchard Breland, it, again, I just thought... He got his feet tangled. But yeah, they said, you well, say you got was, your feet tangled. Could, but could you, you say yeah. it was incidental? Well, he hits his back hit, with his hand. Yeah. He caught him on the heel. Right. Okay, well, that's pass interference to me because I don't think Mike's going to go down without that. And if you say that ball was too far, well, if you let him run all the way through it, he's 6'5". I don't know. Maybe he, if he keeps going, maybe he's got a chance right. to lay out and catch that. Okay, I'm, going, I'm throwing the flag on that mm -hmm. one. I got no problem with that. Okay, so now we get down to the goal line and we get the honey badger play. And I am with you on this one. I probably would not have called this one. Again, did he have hands on him? Yeah, he did. Was the ball way overthrown? Yes, it was. Uh, the call gets made before Skip, it's clear. Skip, look at this. Clear. How you gonna catch that Skip? No. <laughs> and Honey Badger does the great thing. He doesn't let him cross his face. He yeah. said, look, if you're gonna hit me with a, uh, the fade, uh, the fade yeah. okay, you got me. Okay. But I'm not gonna let you cross my face. By the way, that was a max blitz. Yes, Everybody's yes, coming. Blitz, Brady had to throw it off his yeah. back foot yes. and just throw it up for grabs, hoping that six foot five would get there. I would have let that one I, go. So would have I. Okay. I, but that might have been the only one, though, Skip. Okay. I, I got that. But then it comes down to that set up the touchdown play, which was one yard to Antonio. And who did they victimize on that play? Honey Badger. It's Honey Badger. So they make the little in and out move with right. AB, and he throws it low so he can go down and snatch it at the turf. Okay. And Honey Badger didn't like it. And he had something to say to Tom about it. Here's the low throw that he's, is his trademark down inside the uh, five. Okay, and then they get into it. And I don't know who started it. Brady wanted to finish it. And then no, Honey Badger comes over and he waves a finger at him. Okay, to me, I might have thrown two flags on this yes. play. I might have, because they were both hot and heavy into this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then you know, it, it escalates into what we're about to talk about after that. But the, the point is, I, I thought that was a two-way right. foul. Right, okay? because once once uh, Honey Badger leaves, you can't allow another guy to go chasing down mm. and get his last say no. in. Because it's normally the last guy that does something, Skip, that gets caught. Okay, so it's it's always who who swings back. Right, right. The, the second okay. guy gets but, caught. But I'm, I'm not sure who swung first. Right. That they're they're mouthing at right. each other. That's okay. But then it escalates to the point. Tom goes to him. Then he comes back and wags his finger. Right. The only blatant the, the finger wag right. came from Ty to Tom. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that got called, and I thought it was unfair. Brady yeah. didn't get one too. Right. He deserved it. I, I, I totally agree. Now, Honey Badger did tweet. Is this yeah, deleted? We're, we're, we're talking we're about back that. to talk about. But Skip, it. look. Yeah. I've always said this about the Chiefs, and it wasn't concerning because you repeat negative behavior. You do. And a lot of times you repeat it in the most inopportune of times, a game of this magnitude. See, Skip, when you committed, you did a personal foul felony, and you up 30 to 10. Yeah. Uh, man, we winning, we winning. But what happens when you're in a close ball game mm -hmm. or you're down by seven, mm -hmm. you're down by 10, and you do these dumb things, okay. and you keep drives alive? Smart, Mike Shannon, man, look here. Mike Shannon, you tell a lot, he say, Dumb players get you beat. Dumb fouls get you beat. They do. You do dumb things, it gets us beat. Mm -hmm. So for once, I want you to think about this. Instead of you getting him back, yep. let's get him back on the scoreboard, right. and then you have your say at the end of the game. Why did Andy Reid get let go in Philadelphia? What was his reputation that he was a little soft? Yes. That, that he was so much a player's coach. He loved his players so much that they weren't in great condition mm -hmm. and that they weren't mentally disciplined to avoid these kinds Correct. of penalties. Yes. So Jeffrey Lurie finally said, I got to go in a new direction. And that was to Chip Kelly, Kelly. who's supposed to come in and crack down, right? <laughs> okay, well, we know he, he had his moments for right. a while. But, but the point is, Andy got another shot in Kansas City, and, and I'm sure he changed some things, but I think in the end, he is who, that's who he, he is. That's who he is. He, he is. he has offensive genius about yes. him, and they do a lot of things offensively that are revolutionary. Mm -hmm. But again, he, he often had a reputation, except for the great Jim Johnson, the, the mm -hmm. defensive coordinator, that, that he has no focus on the other side of the ball. Right. Well, he needed Spags, and he needed the great Jim, the late great Jim Johnson to, to be his coordinator. Skip, the way I look at it is that when your team gets a lot of penalties, 
one of two things is happening. Either you're coaching it or yep. you're condoning it. Yep, that's right. Now, which is it? Yep. That's all I need to know. Which yep. are, is that what you coach? Is that what you condone? Condone. Because there is no possible way mm -hmm. you can continuously get these type penalties yep. in these situations. It cost you a chance to go to the Super Bowl two years ago. It did. And here it is. You get in the big game and you repeat. It's who Andy Reid is. Well, yeah, you got to change it. Take the good and the bad. Well, the good is good when it's really good. It's really good. But yep. what happens when things are not going Agreed. so good? Agreed. Mm. Okay, well, you guys mentioned it, what happened between Honey Badger and Tom Brady. So let's dig a little deeper into that. Tyree Matthew received an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty.